All right, in this week's uh, episode of uh, Ceramics Gone Wild here, we're going to go over a request by a lot of people. I get a request for this quite often from my students uh, for the swirly mug here. Uh, the swirly mug is one of my personal favorites. This is actually the coffee mug I'm currently drinking out of. Sometimes they ebb and flow out of my cabinet. But uh, the swirly mug is often requested. Sometimes I throw a quick mug and just demonstrate for one student. But I'm going to make uh, three different swirly mugs. So this is the first one I'll start with. Um, I'll make what we call the bullet shell or the casing. Um, so I'll throw basic mug. All these are exactly one pound. I'll be coming in and out of here to grab bats and things like that. So we'll start with the basics. Yeah, as always, coning up and coning down. I don't go too too high on something this small. And for my beginners, please make sure you measure your bottom. Compress the bottom. I can already feel a little air pocket in there. Um, had a student help me weigh these out. My fault. Clicking sound you're hearing is uh, my bat. This one's a little loose. Oops, water went outside. I usually do mostly water on the inside. Outside, I have a sponge, so I don't need to worry about it as much. Okay, so basic mug shape. Last pole, I think I'm on my second or third here. Sorry about that. This last pole, just making sure my walls are nice and even. Okay, compress my lip. And I get a little bit of the water out of the inside. And this one's pretty good. You can't see the inside bottom, but this is also where I like to reach in on a mug and make sure if I dug my fingers in, I make my bottom nice and flat. Trim my bottom off, a little skirt. This little shelf is just kind of questioning me, or I'm questioning it. Yeah, it's pretty good. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. So the bullet casing, or the bullet shell, I like to make the side nice and flat, or nice and straight. Um, I could do a swirl with just what I have here, but for this one, I'm going to make the side. I'm pushing out from the inside until I hit my rib. And you hear that stuttering, that's uh, my fault because I'm not turning my rib the way I should be, which is the way the wheel's spinning. There we go. And my measurement on the bullet casing, just for future reference, is the height of this rib. So right there, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna collar from there. Little bit of moisture on the collar. I found over time that this is really good for thermodynamics, meaning the more the mug tapers in, the more it holds heat. So I was making these wide coffee mugs for a while and they tend to, uh, the liquid inside tends to not hold its temperature nearly as long. So I'm coloring in a little bit more. Trim that nice and level. Okay, with these 
lips. I want it to be semi-thick because I don't want it to chip, but I also want it to pour well. And when lips go inward, they tend to pour kind of funny, sort of down the side of your face. So what I do is I hold the outside of the lip and I'll take my finger and just tilt it out just slightly. Let it go a few rotations. Because really a vertical lip, one that just goes straight up, is the best pour as far as a mug is concerned, not as far as pitcher. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up just slightly. Okay, now it's time for the swirl. So the swirl, I'm gonna slow this down. And I'm gonna reach as low as I can. If I can't reach, like I have really short fingers, I could use the popsicle stick side of my modeling tool here. I'd use the dole side. I'd flip it, cause it's got like a hook. I'd use the dole rounded side down below. Uh, this one I think I'm, I have long enough fingers, but I go down almost to where my clay hits right here. And like I, messed up the lip by hitting it right now. If I do hit it while I'm doing the swirl as well, this thing's gonna be so thrown off when I do the spiral that I'm gonna have to fix the lip anyway. But I'm gonna start my spiral as low as I can reach, somewhere around here. I don't wanna go too low because I need to be able to trim this piece. But I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna stop right before that little shoulder. So on this bullet shell style or bullet shell uh, shape, I'm gonna stop right there. So that way I can fix whatever happens to the top. So I'm gonna go down, see how it hit the webbing of my finger there? But I'm gonna push, and when I go, I really gotta commit. Okay, right to the shoulder, and you can see how it threw off the top part. All that takes is quick spin and a hold. Okay, so now we got a nice little spiral. If you went for the spiral and you just really didn't feel like you committed or it just wasn't deep enough, I don't usually like to do this because it throws me off for trimming, but I'll show how to trim these later. But I take and I push that out a little further. And you can see how much more that threw the top off, but again, I'll just hold the lip on the inside and I will throw it back into the shape that I want. But again, that's why I don't like to go any higher than here. So that is spiral mug number one. Later I'll, put, I'll trim it, put a handle on it. Uh, these actually taught me quite a bit about trimming and uh, I'll make a video on that as well. But this really taught me about creating a center line. I used to just do an inner foot. Now I do an inner and outer ring when I trim because uh, these things get a little wonky. As you can see when you're just watching it, they get thrown on. So this next one is another style. And I picked this up from uh, some guy who's got the world record for throwing mugs. I think he threw a hundred mugs in an hour. Yeah, crazy fast when he throws. But he uh, did these little swirly mugs and this is the style he did. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. Press my bottom. Recenter. This one I threw a little bit wider. This one's gonna be a little bit uh, wider out, more of like a old school coffee mug. A little bit better pull this time. That first pull was kind of soft. Pulling really pushing that bottom end in 
My inside hand's just staying nice and steady, gives me something to push against. When I trim the bottom like that too, that's another common question I get from my students. So when I first start teaching them, I teach them to use the modeling tool, go straight down, trim off that excess skirt. Then I teach them to go needle tool underneath. It's just safer. But once you're getting a little more advanced, instead of doing all that and changing tools, I just scrape here. And I scrape with my modeling tool pointed out. So it goes out this way instead of in towards my mug and sticking to my mug. So now for the swirl on this one. I'm not going to change the shape of this one because me doing the swirl is going to kind of change it anyway. I am going to do a little lip seat. I will trim that level in just a moment. And it, this will change a little bit, but I'm going to get the outside and inside wet. This is more wet than I usually throw. But I need my hands to have as little friction as possible. So I'm going to start this. So normally when we throw, my inside hand is a little higher than my outside because my inside hand has that floor of clay. So it's here and my outside hand is at the very bottom. On this swirl, I'm going to switch okay, and then I'm just going to follow it up. So it's going to give me a swirl pushing out and it's also going to give me a swirl uh, pushing from the outside in. So I'm going to slow it down. A little faster than that. Go. So right here, my finger's here, my other one is below it, my, one, my hand inside. Okay, this one's a little bit more, um, I guess it's a little less wild, a little less pronounced. I even like it a little more than that. I'm going to do it again. Then I'm going to straighten out the top and level it, because this one's off. Okay, level it. So it's all about using those little tricks and things you know over time with experience, um, how to clean up your piece how to uh, really just kind of go for it on some of these altered forms. This one's not that altered, but you really got to go for it and just trust that you can get it back and really uh, not be afraid to make some mistakes because if you are afraid of mistakes, you're never going to try anything new. And this one pound of clay, it's not the end of the world if you scrap it and have to recycle it. Push that little lip seat back out. Now, this isn't usually the way these ones come out. Um, they tend to open the top a little bit more, but I like it. So I'm going to leave it and make one last one. clean bat and we'll do one more swirl. This last swirl is going to be from the outside only. So the first one was inside only, second one was both, and last one. Uh, that second one, by the way, just going back to it um, while I'm on it, on the topic, you can uh, go all the way to the top if you want to. You can go all the way to the top of your piece. Um, that's about the only one I would recommend doing that to. This next one you kind of can, but it does uh, affect the function of it. So last mug, and this one I think is the most simple as far as, uh, I guess, effectiveness or probability of success on the first try. Watch me mess it up. I have a new thing with my students. I asked them, I had made a video recently, actually, a bigger piece, it was a two-piece uh, pot. 
And I said, you know, I kind of messed up in the video. My pot flew off the wheel uh, while I was putting it together. And I asked them, uh, should I post it or just make another one and start over? And they said, you know what, keep it real. So I'm trying to be more realistic in some of these videos here. So I leave all my, my flaws out there. Lord knows I have plenty. This one I'm just going to pull straight up. Not exactly sure what shape I want to do. Um, it doesn't really matter on this outside swirl. That last hole, I really want to dig all that clay in there so I can use it all. Trying to think of what shape I want to do with this one. Um, I'm going to leave it somewhat vertical for sure. My collar the top in after I get the water out. It's going to be a very traditional shape. I'm not spending that much time on the shape itself because that's not the whole intention of the video. You learn a little bit of everything. Uh, whether you're watching somebody who's as good as you or not, I learn a lot from my students who have little to no experience when they come in here. Uh, sometimes they learn what not to do and sometimes they learn what to do. trim the bottom and you'll see what I was talking about earlier where I trim and I scrape off I'm gonna trim that little belly in so if I were to turn my tool this way it would jump back on my pot so I turn my tool this way and it just goes onto my modeling tool so as far as the swirl is concerned on this one um, I'm gonna use just a metal rib you could use a wooden rib I've seen students use their modeling tool, dull side, sharp side. You can do a lot of different things with this outside um, swirl. So this one I'm going to slow it down. And I'm really going to commit on this one. I'm probably going to stop before the lip. Again, this one's not the best to go all the way to the top. But um, the middle one with both fingers, I, that one you can go all the way up. It's not a big change. So I'm going to really dig that little sharp part of my... Uh, smooth rib here and just go for it. So I'm going to slow this down even more. Like so. So again, you can see when it spins, it's way out of whack. But I just reach inside and hold that lip still. Hold, get a little bit of moisture, hold that lip as still as I can. Uh, with the outside one, I do like to take a sponge, I'll slow it down, and just soften some of those sharp lines, like so. Uh, you can even do it by hand if you really wanted to, but I like to get it done while it's on the wheel. So those are the spiral mugs, the trio of spirals. So we did inside only, inside and out at the same time, and then just the outside. And again, you get creative with the tools you use on the outside. Sometimes I just use my finger on the outside. Uh, sometimes I use various tools. I've even used the lid master. I tried this and I just opened this up and I pressed it in and went up. Uh, you're gonna find that some tools leave more residual clay to clean up. Uh, than others so the smooth rib is just one that i use very commonly so that is the spiral mug and i'll make a video on how to trim these later